now open. We have head coach uh, Dan Burt with us, uh, April Robinson, Amadea Samashi. I hope I said that right. Great job. Okay. <laughs> and Devin Air Workman. Okay. Uh, at this time, questions for the student athletes. We'll start in the corner here. Um, I would say that on defensive end, we would have to like try to pack it in, but not so much because we know they have other forces on the outside and just try to contain her to the best of our ability. Okay, Zach. I think we are uh, great uh, in playing as a team and sharing a basketball, and we have uh, we have good players in every position, and I think we have the ability to to score and to defend uh, all across one to five, and we always believe in each other and uh, play with a lot of heart and passion, and I I think if we are bringing our best game, uh, we can have a good game with them. Pat, go ahead. I think everyone's excited in the locker room. Um, I don't think there's any nerves right now. We've already been told not to be scared. They're just another team. Um, yes, they're the best team in the country, but on any given night, a team is beatable. Um, as long as we execute our game plan and do what we have to do, I think – um, we have a good shot at them, and but overall, everyone's just really excited to play them. Okay, back over in the front here. Um, I would probably say some of, somewhat of an up tempo, yet staying calm. Um, we know they like to get out in transition and. Um, if we have the opportunity, we'll get out and transition as well. Um, I know our coaches want us to continue tacking and don't set it out. Um, don't bring the ball back. Make them play defense once instead of twice. So I would probably say an up-tempo game as long as we can control it. Second row. Um, obviously, we enjoyed the win yesterday for a couple of the hours, but – um, later that night, we got refocused, did a little film session as long as, as well as this morning, and you know we're all focused, ready to play. Zach. Uh, I think the first five minutes is very important. Um, that's when usually that, that team, after watching that Robert Morris game, they had a lot of steals and stuff like that, and they just got on a run automatically. We got to take care of the ball and um, come out strong that first five minutes is very important for us to stay in the game. Pat. I do like I comprehend it, but they're not superhuman. Like, <clears throat> like April said, they could be beat. Like, I'm not gonna get caught up in their greatness. Like, I could play too, so I'm gonna play to the best of my ability against them. I'm not gonna back down at all. Okay, over here. I think it's very important to um, play to our best effort to just be as tough uh, as we can be. I think one of the most important things to just uh, take it all out and leave everything on the floor. And especially on defense, it's going to be important to be tough and stop them early and uh, don't let them get the ball, especially to just play the post defense, three quarter defense and bomb them uh, early in transition, always get back and rely on each other. I think it's, it's going to be important too, to talk a lot on defense and stay together as a team and always keep our composure no matter what and have those answer points. Pat. Uh, 
Um, I know everyone from staff to players, we've gotten a tremendous amount of support from people back home. Um, Murders Row, I know some people came to the game yesterday, and I believe they'll be here on Monday night too. Um, but the sport is amazing. Um, I think we opened a lot of people's eyes, and they're finally realizing that you know a lot of Duquesne sports are better than what they used to be. Um, but a lot of the messages is, you know, teams, the UConn's beatable. Um, you know, give it all you got. Play with heart and, you know, just be ready to play. Marvin. Coach, in one word, how would you sum up your season so far? One word. Um, <laughs> um, it's been an amazing year um, from – the beginning from preseason and to see our team grow as a family and the way we gel, you know, no matter how much we might have gotten down in a game, we always kept fighting, um, fought back on adversity. Um, but it's surreal and it still is. But, you know, we're living in the moment and we're having a great time experience this. And we're all really fortunate to have this opportunity to play in the NCAA tournament. Zach. Of course we do, um, but we can't be stuck on that. Like we're still trying to keep going. Um, it's amazing what we have accomplished, but it would be lovely to accomplish many more things. So that's what we're focused on now, UConn, and to keep going on in this tournament. Go ahead. Yep. We have nothing to lose. Go all <laughs> out. Um, stay confident. Like Dev said, it's just another game. Um, and yeah. I, I feel like all the younger players' mentality is just the same way. They are, they're so in here and ready to fight and give everything they have. And that's, that's what's special about us. I feel like that every single one of us has that type of mentality. And we stick together at the same time and understand each other very well. Go ahead, Pat. Um, I mean, there's pressure on us, of course, too, but, like, I don't know. Like, I don't really know how to explain it. <clears throat> we came this far. Why go out weak? Like, just fight for every loose ball, um, die for everything, go after every rebound, box out strong. Why not? Like, what else do we have to lose? Let's just keep going forward, do the best that we can. Anything else for the student athletes? All right. Dismiss back to the Thank locker you. room. Thank About you. 20 minutes left on the locker room. Good job. Okay, at this time, we're going to open it up for questions to the head coach. We'll start over here. <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> Our, our scout team is very similar to them. Uh, our male practice squad, which unfortunately you know cannot be here to practice with us, uh, is very similar. We have a kid who reminds me so much of Brianna Stewart and, and Katie Samuelson. Um, and when we go out to recruit that male practice squad, you know we recruit five foot eight to five foot ten super quick guys, and then a lot of six foot two to six foot four wings, and so. Some of the things that we'll see tomorrow, we've been able to replicate a little bit in practice. Um, I don't feel like you can totally understand what this is going to be like tomorrow until you're out there. Uh, the big point of emphasis has already been said. We've said it yesterday. We've said it multiple times. The first five minutes of the game are going to really dictate an, an incredible amount. Um, we know that – I used – a word yesterday was probably incorrect. I used the word bully. I'd rather use the word dominate. They're going to try to dominate your soul for that first five minutes and break your will. And it's, it's everything that we match their physicality from the very beginning. And that's what our plan is to do. Zach. Dan, 
I think their strength, uh, you know, once you once you get past Brianna Stewart, who who has a lot of similarities to John Quell with her shot blocking ability and her length and, and, and height uh, and skill set, they're very similar players. Um, their their other posts are explosive off the dribble from the high post. Uh, they shoot the three well enough to keep you honest, uh, if not better. And uh, their their overall physical strength. They're a great basketball team. We all know that. Um, you know their their basketball IQ of their post players is very high. They move without the ball very very well. Um, it, you know, for us, you know, I, I said yesterday, we're pretty good too, though. You know, we have two post players that are outstanding in Kadrian Loss and Amadeus Samashi, and uh, we may not have quite the physicality that they have, but we have kids that are highly skilled and uh, can shoot the ball from three also. Um, but we'll have to play really well. A second row, Lauren. We have to shorten passes to begin with. Uh, everything that is going to come down to shortening passes and not letting them getting. It, it's very difficult to get dribble penetration against them. They move their feet so well, and they're so active with their hands. You've got to keep your dribble, stay off the sidelines where they use the sideline as an additional defender, and you want to keep the ball in the middle as much as you can. Uh, we have some other things we think, but I'm not going to I'm not going to say anything about that until we get to the game because we have a couple things that we've identified that we think that might be able to help us. Okay, we'll take Pat and then Zach. Pat, right? Pat, if you're composed and, and confident, con and I mean really confident and composed, every zoo is a petting zoo when you think about it, and I told him that. Every zoo is a petting zoo, and what that means is, is that if we show great composure tomorrow and we have great confidence, we'll see if we can pet the husky, but I don't know if we will. <laughs> um, but, you know, you have to have composure and you have to have confidence when you come in here. You have to. You can't be cocky, and we're not that by any stretch. But you lose the game if you don't think that you can win. And so from this morning on, because we celebrate till midnight. Kids celebrated, enjoyed it. We had an ice cream cake social. And then uh, we woke up this morning, and we really started bearing down and focusing. And, uh, you know, we just talked about, like, you know, we're pretty good, too. You know, I mentioned it in the press conference yesterday. Amadea Samashi she's the best player in Hungary in her age group. Anna Kukuter is one of the best in Hungary. Kadrian Loss is the best player in Estonia. That's not the United States. But they're accomplished players also. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing this as how, how good we are and what our measuring stick is and how far we have to go as a team, as a coaching staff, and as players to reach this level hopefully one day on a consistent basis. Uh, but we're looking forward to seeing how far we measure up tomorrow. Go ahead, Zach. Um, Amadea Samashi has really uh, stepped up in terms of her physicality. When Amadea was a freshman, she couldn't pay attention in practice because uh, she was too busy worried about her, an accounting class or something like that, and she had a hard time separating the two. Uh, as a junior this year, she has really worked very hard on her body. Uh, no one eats as cleanly as she does, nor works out as much as she does in the weight room. Uh, she has made incredible strides in terms of body control uh, throughout the season. Uh, what we've seen in the last month is, is we've seen her really accept and embrace hitting people and being physical. And that was something that really lacked in her game her first two years and even lacked probably up until January. And we've seen a big difference there. Now, she still doesn't have the strength that we want her to have, but she's going to go out there and, like she said, she's going to give you 100% of what she does have for the entire game. Uh, Kadrian Loss, um, you know, she scored 20 points the other night, and, and we were really happy about that, but didn't get a single rebound. And, you know, I've reminded her of that probably six or seven or 12 times in the last 24 hours. Um, you know, Kadri allows us to extend defenses because she shoots that three so well. Um, she 
like I said yesterday, was recruited to be a guard, and our plan is to move her to guard next year. Uh, but she is our best post defender, and so uh, her defense tomorrow, her physical defense, jamming cutters and jamming the post player, not allowing them to get to the block early is going to be so important. And both of them have to stay out of foul trouble uh, because we don't go really deep in the post with any kind of size. You know, the next post that comes in with any kind of size is a freshman at Angela Staffolino, who was expected to be – she was going to be a red shirt until October. And uh, instead we played her. And, uh, and, you know, she's given us really good quality minutes over these last couple games. Uh, but, you know, Angela and, Br and then Bree Thomas is a little bit of an undersized post. She actually really plays guard for us. But because we don't have a lot of post step this year, uh, that's the direction we have to go right now. Uh, just under 15 minutes to go with the locker room. Go ahead, Roger. When we go recruiting, every single player that we recruit has to be able to shoot the three. Every player on our team, one through 14, has the green light to shoot the three at any time, at any time. So that's a mainstay of what our program is and what our standards are. Um, UConn's defense is the best in the country in my eyes because they have such great size and they get after you so hard. And it, it, their, their arms being up and staying up and active is just, and they move their feet so well. It, it's so impressive. It is so impressive. And then if you do, if you're somehow able to get by them, you've got Brianna Stewart there or, you know, the, 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 the other big, uh, the, the other big kid. And so that gives you a lot of trouble. Um, spreading them out is going to be really important to us. Not being rattled early is the critical point. We cannot be rattled early. Uh, you know, with them switching, they can switch one through five, and that's going to affect us. You know, when we have Chastity and Magrosso in there at five foot three, that's going to affect us. Uh, you know, can she get by some of those people and get to the rim? Uh, I think one important thing is, is we've got to break the lane. In other words, we may not, we may be able to beat them off the dribble once in a while, but we're not going to get a clean layup. So drive it across the lane, swing, swing, attack, or swing, swing should have an open shot. Um, we're going to see. <laughs> Down in front. Well, it, it, Duquesne, our brand, our brand resonates within about a four-hour radius. Cincinnati, outer suburbs of Detroit, western suburbs of Philadelphia, northern Virginia, D.C. Um, and we try to keep the best local players in Pittsburgh. Uh, Aaron Wiskoviak, who hit that three yesterday late, um, is a kid that was offered by ACC schools coming out of high school and uh, unfortunately had a very serious car accident as a freshman where she had a compound fracture of her leg, almost lost her leg. Uh, but we always try to keep the local kids like Aaron Wiskoviak and Chastity Omagroso and Connor Richardson home. Uh, we've lost very few of them. Who have we lost? Madison Cable. Whose parents, she's from Notre Dame, whose parents both played at Duquesne. Dad was an assistant women's coach. Uh, Shatori Walker at Maryland. Um, we battled for them. So we always try to maintain the local kids to stay home. Uh, but with that being said, we have found that from an international perspective, we can get some really talented kids, especially posts, who fit our system, who can shoot the three. And, uh, you know, my wife, uh, when we were talking this morning, she goes, you're getting blown up all over the Hungarian women's basketball websites. You guys don't know anything about that, but my wife's from Hungary, so I know all about that. Um, so we, we've been very fortunate that uh, uh, we've gotten a lot of very positive publicity over there. And like I had mentioned earlier, uh, with Amadea and Eniku and Kadri and Yutsa, those are kids that are very well known in their country for being, if not the best player in their age group, one of the very best. And uh, that really helps sell the younger group. And uh, we're successful in that for a big, one big reason. We really get to know who the kids are and what their culture is and what their language is. And it's very important. I can treat you very, very well, or I can cuss you out, I guess you could say, <laughs> in many different languages. Um, and so the kids, I think, really appreciate that we can do things like that. Um, but we, 
it's just part of who we are, and we understand the diversity of it very well. And um, us and Maine and, and, and uh, Colorado State have really, and really South Florida, all four of us have really embraced that route in terms of getting our programs to where we are today. Time for a couple more if anyone has a question. Come on. Over here. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I thought we would be there in year one. Um, my first year when I took over from being assistant to being the head coach, we had two players that are playing in the Euro League right now in Orshi Sechi and Wumi Agunbiade, uh, two kids that turned down many Power Five schools. Um, we had a very, very good team. That was a year of adjustment for the players, and it was a year of adjustment for me, um, learning. And, uh, and we won 20 games, and we went to the postseason but it was a disappointing year. I mean, we were like 56 in the RPI. Um, last year, we won 23 games. I believe we were 45th or 46th in the RPI and, and really felt like we were deserving of, of an at-large bid. That didn't happen. Um, you know, I, th I think I mentioned this yesterday. In August of this year, uh, I said to our boosters, if I don't screw it up, we're really talented and we're going to be really good. And I guess I didn't screw it up too bad. So it's, it's worked out. Um, it's not necessarily me, though. Uh, my assistant coaches do more than the average assistant coaches. Matt is our offensive coordinator, Matt Schmidt, and Rachel Wadowski is our defensive coordinator. Eddie Benton runs our transition and rebounding, and they do an incredible job of really coaching because I allow my coaches to coach. And, uh, and then you talk about the senior leadership and the upperclassmen leadership of April Robinson and Millie Gronish and Dev Workman and Amadea and Bree Thomas. Those five have imparted the culture and the standards of what Duquesne basketball is to those freshmen. And in turn, those freshmen allowed themselves to be coached, which is so critical because you can have all the talent in the world. I mean, Chassio Magrosso had many pass Power Five offers, and you know she had verbally committed to Pitt as a freshman. And, uh, she was two-time AAA State Player of the Year in the state of Pennsylvania. She didn't necessarily have to have April take her underneath her wing, and she did. And that says a whole lot to what that kid is and, and what our team is. It's, it's been a magical year. There's no question about that. Um, we hope that this is a magical year that will continue on a consistent basis, and we have built this program to be – at this level on a consistent basis. And uh, the freshmen that we have coming in next year, we're really excited about. One of them is FIBA's best three-on-three -three player in the world at 18 and under. We've got a 6'2 guard coming from Montreal who's outstanding. And, uh, and we have a, a, another player or two that are coming that are very, very high level. Um, how quickly they adapt and how quickly we uh, find experience at the guard spot will determine a whole lot because uh, we'll be very good in the post. Okay, last one right here. Coach, you mentioned Coach Biden. Mm hmm That's very important. I give away your game plan seven. What are some of the, one of the things that you went over in your practice meeting with your coaches that you emphasized that this will give us the advantage of Coach Biden? I don't know if we'll have the advantage. We just don't want to have the disadvantage. If that means calling a quick timeout, if that means taking a 10-second backcourt back violation as opposed to throwing it away and allowing them to have a, lay, a layup and fuel the momentum that they always want to get in those first five minutes, we'll take the 10-second backcourt violation. Um, keeping the ball off the sideline so you don't have that extra defender there. Um, knowing that it's going to be a zone press more than likely, um, finding that middle person uh, and, and coming and meeting your pass is going to be critical. And, and then the, the biggest thing is, is once you break that press, you don't want to pull the ball back out and set it up and have to beat their defense again. So once you beat them in transition, you got to go, go, go. So I'll, I'll kind of answer April's question that you said earlier. It's going to be a track meet. It's going to be a track meet. And hopefully we're not the turtle. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Coach. Thank you all for supporting women's basketball.